All right, so I would assume by the name you guys know that I am a dentist. I own my own office, Venice Implant Dentistry and Laser. It's me and the guy that I bought it from, he is no longer practicing. He retired about two or three months after I purchased the office. But I wanna give you all a little bit of tour so you know what I do and where I work every day. So here she is. This is a 100 year old building in Venice, Florida. I purchased the building along with the practice. Redid the parking lot. My boy Chad Miller did it, did an incredible job, painted it. It's got to stay pink, unfortunately, because it is a historic building since it's 100 years old. And so in order to paint it, I would have to go through the historic board and explain to them why I want to paint it. And it's really not that bad. So walking in, I've redone all this. This has all been remodeled. There's a, the original fireplace. I got kind of like a little station with beverages and coffee. I need to go get some more stuff. Patients check in here. And, you know, moving around back, we have a 3D CT machine. So instead of getting all of those x-rays when you go to the dentist, this machine kind of handles that for you. It takes one big 3D picture. Over here, I have my 3D printing set up. I got two 3D printers, a wash station, which is right in my office. This room's going to get remodeled last. I want to prioritize all the other rooms in the office so that everyone else can use them to their full potential. And then I can just do mine last. And so I built myself a pretty sweet setup because I do a lot of 3D design and love this, love this setup. So going on back, we got two bathrooms here on our right, surgical operatory. These rooms are a little bit scary, but we do some really good work in these rooms and all this equipment works as it is. So I'm kind of torn. Like, why would I mess with something that's not broken? Another surgical operatory. And moving on back, got a sterile room, hygiene room, which I just remodeled over the weekend. I got some new cabinets coming, so I'm going to tear out all those cabs. And then our new patient room. So that's it. It's a really small office, but it's very efficient and works well. I'm a sole doctor here, and I'm what I really like about my office is it's small enough and manageable so that I don't have to be jumping room to room to room constantly all day long. I can spend the time with the patients that they deserve, and that way we can do things right the first time. I hate going to a doctor's office and they spend five to 10 minutes with you before moving on to the next patient. I really wanna make it a personable experience here and give people the work that they deserve and are out looking for. So that's my office, four operatories, sole practitioner, love what I do. If you or somebody needs dental work, hit me up. I love helping people and getting them to a healthier place in life. All right guys, I'm gonna bring you something a little bit different this time. Today we're gonna to be talking about some teeth. And so what is traditionally done when somebody loses a tooth is a dental implant is placed. They usually have a few different options. One, you can do nothing, you could leave the space alone. But when it's up front, you don't really wanna go without a tooth there. So there's three other options you can go with. The first option would be something like this that would be removable. It looks like one of those little Invisalign retainers. You can put a tooth in and then it snaps into place, right? But you can still kind of see these aligners and they get dirty over time. If you eat something like spaghetti, it's going to turn it red. I mean, they just kind of wear out quickly. And they, to be honest, they're not that great, but it's the most affordable option. Moving on, you can do something like this, which is a dental bridge. These bridges are glued into place and do not come out, but you have to shave down the tooth on either side. Okay, so you grind down this tooth, you grind down this tooth, and then a bridge is made and that's glued in a place. I don't do either of these options, but they are an option for somebody who may not be able to afford an implant or they may not have the bone to place a dental implant. So that moves on to my next solution to replace a tooth that's missing. You could do something like this. This is a dental implant and this is not the actual size and no, you do not put a nut on the end to screw it in place like you would on your car, but this is a dental implant. It's supposed to look, feel, and floss like a normal tooth. This implant is placed and then it takes six months to heal, okay? So this is my niche. I am a dental implantologist. I drill holes and I place these dental implants into the bone. These implants are made out of a titanium alloy. They, can, they contain a couple different types of metal, Titanium being one of them, and that's why it takes so long for them to heal. The titanium actually fuses to the bone. And so we're moving on to the new solution, all right? This is something that uh, is kind of coming about in dentistry. It's an option for those who do not want to have metal implants or may have an allergy or, or maybe the titanium implants haven't worked before. Come on over here, Sam. 
This is a zirconia implant by Neodent. You can actually see the implant in there. It's white. Can you see it on the camera? It's right there. And they come with a certain set of drills that you know you'd have to place it with. These drills are specifically designed to place this exact implant. There are a couple different brands of zirconia implants. I have experience with Neodent. It's a company owned by Strauman. They're kind of like the general motors of dental implant stuff, right? You can get the parts anywhere, anytime. It's not something that you have to ship from overseas. They're made right here in America, isn't that right? Sure. No? Yeah, not made here in America. <laughs> but they are FDA approved, all right? So today we are going to be placing a zirconia implant on the patient. Uh, you know, we're going to keep really close eye on it. The research is there to back these implants, but the difference with these zirconia implants are they, they are more prone to something breaking, right? Because zirconia has incredible compressive forcing, right? When you take a piece of zirconia or something like a fake diamond and you try to crush it, it's very difficult. But zirconia breaks with shearing forces, right? So shearing would be something where it would slide or push against it, not directly on it. So imagine like a shearing force of two pieces of flat metal rubbing against each other you know, without oil or like your, uh, you know, your main bearings on your rods, you know, if you don't have oil to lubricate that shearing back and forth of the rod against the crank can cause friction and then bearing failure and then ultimate destruction of your engine. So, you know, these zirconia implants, you have to be paced, placed very specifically so that when somebody is chewing and biting, they aren't having those shearing forces. They're only having those compressive forces. So, you know, it wouldn't be ideal on a site somewhere like a canine. A canine is designed for those movement of your jaw side to side. It's not really designed to bite straight up and down. Same thing with your front teeth. You kind of slice through something and sometimes people will pull. Wouldn't be a good idea to place a zirconia implant there. Now, when we talk about your teeth in the back, especially up top and on the bottom, you know, now you're talking about more compressive forces. Those are your crushers. Those are your teeth that are going to be crushing food, whereas a cornea implant would probably be better to be placed. Now, people are concerned with aesthetics, you know, up front, and we've seen people with some metal along their gums up front, you know, so if they're very concerned with aesthetics, Zirconia implants can be used in the upfront region to help with how things are going to look for the long term. So pretty new, pretty cool stuff. It's new. It's emerging in dentistry. We're trying to stay on the forefront of it and really, you know, dive in and just go for it. And my patient that I'm placing the zirconia implant on already has about five or six of them. So she, we know that her body is going to take well to this implant. And I'm, I'll show you guys the results as it continues to heal on. So let's get to surgery. So really neat thing about how I place dental implants, which is kind of my personal touch, is I design and 3D print these surgical guides in my office. And how these surgical guides work is I have a specific drill that I design these surgical guides around. And once I get the scans of the patient's mouth, as well as their bone scan, I'm able to design something like this. And the way this works is, zoom on in here, Sam. Sam, take a look at this. This drill only specifically fits in this hole a certain angle and direction and can only go in a certain depth as well. So this guide is gonna fit over the patient's teeth and then we're going to use this drill to actually make the hole. The hole is then widened to a specific parameter before placing the implant. So that's what we're gonna do right now.
got done placing the zirconium implant on our patient, my initial thoughts are you're able to tighten or torque the implant a lot stronger than I speculated with the zirconia implants. My fingers, I only tuned them for titanium today, but since we placed zirconia, I used my torque wrench and I was able to get 60 Newton centimeters and 60 Newton centimeters off the top of my head is this in inch pounds or foot pounds. You know, when you place an implant, you want the implant level to be at the bone or just below it. We ended up about one millimeter above the bone. It's not gonna be detrimental to the patient's long-term prognosis, but for me to have to take that implant out again, drill the hole wider and deeper could hurt the long-term healing of this implant more than just leaving it one millimeter above the bone. So, you know, we went ahead and placed the healing collar on the implant and this is what the x-ray looks like. So here's two x-rays of the implant. You can see that it's in the bone. If in order to tap into this harder bone here, you know, placing a zirconia implant into the floor of the sinus, there really isn't a lot of research with that yet. So I was trying to steer away from the sinus and work with what little bone we had. You can see that the bone levels here, the implant sticks up about a millimeter and that's gonna be okay. The strength of the stability of that implant when I initially place it is very high and so I think that this implant has a great chance of healing well. All right guys, check it out. This is a case I am planning right now and what's cool about it, you can see where I've placed the implant in the bone in three dimensions and then here's the surgical guide. So this surgical guide is going to snap in over their teeth. Let me show you here. And it's the perfect sized hole for my drill. So it goes exactly where I want it to. Pretty cool stuff, guys. And then I'm gonna send this guide off to my 3D printer and get that going. Well guys, one of my life goals is nearing complete and that is to reach 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to get one of those plaques. I don't know what it is about it, but I just want one so bad. I feel like I've been serving my time and I know it's gonna pay off eventually, so I'm gonna keep on grinding, but I really appreciate you guys' support and we'll see you on the next episode. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker's 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.